What is going on guys? It's Real Touch Gmail here. Back with another video for you guys today. And today is number four of our Let's Build a Game in Java series. So the last three parts we went ahead and actually created a player. We now have movement with our player and everything is pretty cool. You know, we've got the arrow keys for our player two, WSD for our player one. We're not gonna have a player two, but you know, just to show that how you can use different keys for different things, that's what we've done. So today, I think we, we should go on and create the actual concept for the game. Let's create an enemy, let's create a health bar, let's create like a little heads up display system, and uh, possibly some collision, All right? So let's go ahead and start. So what I'm gonna do real quick, is I'm just gonna take out player two because that, that was not needed at all. That was just for the sake of learning different keyboard inputs. So in our ID, I'm just gonna take this out. And there we go. And I'm gonna actually change this to basic enemy because we're gonna have all different types of enemies in our game. All right, and we can get rid of that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and, oh, keyboard input. <laughs> we need to get rid of a lot of stuff here. Get rid of that. Kind of clean it up a little bit. And there we go. All right. So let's go ahead and create an enemy. So I'm just going to create a new class and I'm going to name it Basic Enemy. And here, just like our, our uh, player, we're going to extend game object. And we're just going to add the constructor. And we are going to add the unimplemented methods. We can take out our tick and uh, or add override on our tick and render. And here I'm just going to say g dot set color color dot red, you know, because the enemy is conventionally red. And we're going to fill our rectangle at x y, and we'll make it like a 16 by 16. Actually, what is our player? 32 by 32. Yes, yeah, so we'll make it half of what our player is and x plus equals velocity x and y plus equals velocity y. So this should be all the same for you. So if we went ahead and we copied this in our game class here and we just put down id dot basic enemy and we ran it. Oh, actually, you know what? New basic enemy, not new player. and we ran that now we just have a little red square which is gonna be our enemy so pretty cool just like that we now have an enemy so we need to make it do something so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have it bounce around the screen a little bit and you have to dodge it right so to do that pretty simple actually we are going to start its velocity X to equal we'll say 5 and velocity Y to equal 5 and in our tick, we are going to say if our y value is less than or equal to zero, or our y value is greater or equal to game dot height velocity x or velocity y times equals negative one. And let's take out the velocity x for now. And let's just see what that does. So as you can see, and now we just need to do a little bit of minus 16, I believe. No, that didn't. Minus 32. There we go. You just have to play around with the numbers. But so now what's happening is when it reaches the top of the screen, it's reversing whatever its velocity y was. It's just completely reversing that. And that's just a math thing, right? So if I go ahead and I pull up paint here real quick, just to kind of show you what we're basically doing. And if you don't understand the math behind that, is basically say z is what we want to create. And we're equaling this to say our velocity x variable is right here, or our velocity y. And then we're just multiplying that by negative one. So if we say z 
equals and our, veloc our velocity y is going upward, that would mean it's negative five. And we're multiplying that by negative one. So two negatives multiplied by each other is going to create a positive. And since we're multiplying it by negative one, it's going to turn into z equals five, which is what we want. It's the exact same thing as now, okay, now our velocity is five, and we're now multiplying that by negative one. Since we now have a positive in here, it turns to a negative. So now negative five. So if we're going in the down direction, it's going to do this one, which is going to convert our velocity y to a negative five, which going in the negative coordinate plane of our system is going to bring it up. And once it reaches the top, it's going to go through this algorithm here and it's going to go back down to five and it's going to go, it's just going to loop this over and over and over and over and over again and it will never stop. All right, so let's not save that. So we can do the exact same thing with our velocity x. We can copy this code, paste it down. If x is less than or equal to zero, if x is greater than game dot width, velocity x times equals negative one. And we run that. Actually, let's do minus 16. Yeah, that's better. So now check that out. We now have a red square that is bouncing around the room that we have to essentially dodge, which is going to be in our game. We're gonna have to dodge it. So you know, if we say, for example, now we can do um, like we can create a for loop, like we did before, and say we want 20 enemies in the room. And we can do instead of this r dot next int um, with and copy that paste in here height. So now if we want 20 enemies in the room, whoa! Now the game gets a little bit more difficult, but there's always like a little open space, and that's because we're always setting our velocity x and velocity y2 going in the negative down direction. It's not very random at this point. All right, so there we go. So now we've got all these enemies bouncing across the room that we have to essentially dodge, which is pretty cool. Also, you notice that the player can go out of the room. And let's fix that real quick. And that's pretty simple as well. Uh, let's go into our player class real quick. And let's go to the tick method. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna let you guys try and do this. If you wanna try and do it real quick and you're following along with the code, go ahead and pause the video and try and do it real quick. Um, and then I will go back and I will do it the way I was going to do it. All right, so hopefully you tried it, hopefully you got it correct. Now, here's the way I would go about doing it. So I would set x to equal, and oh, you know what? We actually don't have a method for that because that would be in a library I usually use. So let's create a quick clamp method and basically a clamp method, we, we would do, uh, let's go into the game class here and let's, let's make it right here, okay? And here we're gonna create a static method. So public static int clamp. And here we're gonna have three parameters, int z, or we'll call this value or var, we'll call it variable and then our minimum value and our maximum value. All right, and basically, since this is an integer, we're going, we're going to need to return a integer value within this method. So here, we're basically gonna say, if our variable is greater than or equal to our max, then we're going to return our variable equal to max. All right, and then we're gonna say else, if our variable is less than or equal to min, then return our variable equal to min. And then if it's not any of that, then just return our variable. 
That's just that's basically all we need in that method. So what this is doing is basically saying what we're going to put in here is going to be say our x value. Okay? And so we're saying, all right, if our x value is greater than our max value, so say we put this in as our room width, which we're going to do. If we ever see that our x value is greater than our room width, then return our variable equal to room width so you can never go past room width. Same with the min. So let's go into the player class here. And all we have to do is say x equals game.clamp x min variable 0 maximum value game.width. We'll say like minus 32. You have to play around with it, but there we go. So if we run that, As you can see, whoa, now I cannot go past zero. And over here, I cannot go past what we set our max to, game.width. And it's a little bit off, a couple of pixels off. But we can still go in the Y. So, I mean, we can do the exact same thing here. So we copy this, paste it down. Y equals game.clamp Y, zero, game height, minus 32. And we run that. Now, look at that. We cannot go past our room limits. Actually, this is way off, actually, over here. Let's go ahead and run debug mode. And let me just bring this over to the other screen real quick. So we can save that. And let's try 60. It's over on the other screen right now. Um, there we go so that looks good and then for our width we can say 30 debug mode is very helpful in this situation 25 oh actually we need to be going up 35 37 there we go so that looks good we might be a pixel off or so but see now i went and debugged it so now that our x and y variables are now pretty much perfect so now we cannot get our player out of the room, which is pretty cool, just using these two lines of code. All right, and also, real quick, let's go into the key input real quick, and um, I just kinda wanna do this. I just wanna say if key equals key event dot VK escape, um, system dot exit zero or one or whatever you wanna say, just because, um, so when we can run the game, I can escape and the game will end, basically. It was just kind of annoying me that I had to click X the entire time. All right, so we now have a basic enemy in our game that moves around and all of that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and um, just put one in the game for now. And let's go ahead and create another class. And this is going to be heads up display, HUD class. And here I'm going to have a public void tick and a public void render. Now I'm not going to, it's not going to be an actual game object. So we don't really need to worry about, you know, extending the game object because we don't really need all of that code. But here I'm just going to say public static int health equals 100. Now it's not very good to use static methods or variables i'm just using this here because we're not going to have any other health variable in our game whatsoever uh, and this just makes an ease of access to that so instead of having to initialize the variable of hud or initialize that instance of the class we can now just say hud dot health we don't need to initialize it we don't need to say hud equals new hud um, which is very handy all right so here I'm just going to say, uh, you know, let's just draw the health bar out. So g dot set color, color dot uh, gray. We'll say this is going to be the background, and uh, we're going to say g dot fill rect. And where do we want it to be positioned? Let's position it 15 pixels out, 15, and then the width is going to be let's say 200 pixels, and the height will be 32. Let's see what that looks like. So let's go into our game here. We do need to initialize it once because we're going to be using it. HUD, HUD. And here we're just going to say, um, let's just do it here. HUD equals new 
heads-up display. All right. All right, now let's go down to our tick method here and say hud.tick. And we are going to actually put our hud.render in or on top of our handler render. Actually, you know what? No. I have it the wrong way. We're putting it below. Because what happens is this is just kind of like a depth sort of thing. Um, when we get more into the series, I'm going to actually create a whole entire class to uh, have different depth values, and we don't really, ha it doesn't really matter what order we put it in. But for now, since code reads top to bottom, it's going to render all of our handler class, uh, everything in our handler class, which is all of our objects, and then it's going to uh, render the heads up display class. So with that being said, it's going to render this and then render this, which puts this heads up display on top of the players. So basically, it looks like the heads up display, you know, is above the player, which it is. Um, and so, yeah, it, it would just look kind of weird if we had it the other way around. If you want to go ahead and try that, then try that. But let's go ahead and run it. All right, cool. And as you can see, we now have that gray uh, bar. And as you can see, we are now behind it as a player and all of that stuff. Actually, let's go up here real quick. And one thing I want to do is I just want to say this dot request focus in our run method there. And that just basically means I don't need to click on the screen to have a keyboard control input. Uh, it just happens automatically. All right, so I kind of like the heads up display there. So now let's go ahead and copy it. And we'll paste it again. And I'm going to say green. And here I'm just going to say health multiply by two just because we want it to be 200 not 100 but 100 is a good you know point value and then I'm just going to go ahead and say you know set this to like white and I'm gonna set that to 200 and I'm gonna say instead of fill rec draw rec which kind of just puts like a uh, border around our yeah see there we go now we have like a cool little border around our health bar there so let's put just so you can see it will do health minus minus and you can see the health is draining down and that's what it will be and we can actually clamp our health so we can say health equals game dot clamp health I actually need to do this 0 and 100 so I mean that, that method it can be used for a lot of things so now it does not go down uh, past zero and say we get like an upgrade where we can uh, make our health go up or something like that it won't go above a hundred which is pretty cool all right so I'm thinking that's gonna be it for the tutorial today next tutorial we are gonna go ahead and go into keyboard input or keyboard input what am I talking about we're going to go into collision detection uh, we're going to get a trail for our enemies, so we have a cool little particle effect around our enemies, so it's not just like a box, you know. And, um, and we're going to go into like the level system, the wave system, the, you know, point values. Maybe we'll get into the store. Lots of stuff in the future. So go, go ahead and leave a like. Go and subscribe. Let's try for 120 likes this time. Uh, it really means a lot when I get those likes and I, and I can see how much you guys like the series or how much you guys don't like the series. So I will see you guys next time. Peace.